All right, the purpose of this video is to show why delta x is equal to the initial times delta t plus one half a times delta t squared, where delta t is the time interval over which the object moves. This is the initial speed or velocity, and this is the acceleration. Uh, if you'll notice, if we plot v versus t like this, then uh, if this is t initial and this is t final, then this distance here is delta t, t final minus t initial. That's what delta t is. Delta t is equal to t final minus t initial. And if something is moving at a constant speed, say like this, it doesn't change over time, then uh, this is v initial so that uh, this area under this curve right here is just the height times the base, height times the, the width, or the width times the length, I should say. So this is v sub i times delta t. And that's just the distance that we travel delta v. In other words, delta v is just equal to v sub i times delta t, where v is a constant. So how can we extend this? Well, let me plot again t this way and v this way so that here's t initial and here's t final like that same as this only this time <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the case where we started off with the v uh, initial and we kept that constant until we got to the point t initial so we know that the distance that was traveled between t equals 0 and t equals uh, t sub i is just equal to the area under this curve, which is v initial times t initial. But then at, at t equals initial, we started increasing the speed at a constant rate so that by the time we got to t final, the speed is increased from v initial to v final. In other words, this is delta v, which is equal to v final minus v initial. This is equal to delta t, where delta t, as I said over here, is equal to t final minus t initial. So the total amount of distance that we traveled is just the area under this curve, which is v initial, in other words, the final distance that we, we've achieved by the time we got to t final, it's equal to this area here, v initial times t initial, plus the area under this, and we can easily figure that out because part of it here, this is just v initial times delta t, so that's v initial times delta t, plus the, this part of the area under here, and that's just equal to the base times the height times one half, just the area of a triangle, and that's equal to one half the base, which is delta t, times the height, which is delta v. But from the definition of acceleration, constant acceleration, average acceleration, is just delta v over delta t, and that means that delta v is equal to a times delta t. Or I can say that x final is just equal to v initial times t initial plus v initial times delta t plus one half delta t times delta v, which is just a times delta t. But notice 
that V initial times T initial is just X initial. That's where we, that's the starting position. That's the area under this part of the curve. So this is equal to X initial, that's what this is, this X initial plus V initial times delta T plus one half A times delta T squared. That's what X final is. But if I move this to the other side of the equation and write it as delta F, excuse me, uh, X sub F minus X initial, that's equal to delta X, and that is equal to V initial times delta T plus one half A times delta T squared. And although I'm running out of ink here, that is what I intended to show you.